That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. You've heard this quote many times, and you saw this photo multiple times. You recognize these faces without any help. You most likely saw some of these photos too. They all are iconic, part of popular culture. But did you know that President Nixon actually spoke to Neil and Buzz when they were doing their first moonwalk? I'm talking to you by telephone from the Oval Room at the White House. Or that Buzz Aldrin was cracking jokes about locking themselves out when he was leaving the lunar module. Making sure not to lock it on my way out. <laughs> and actually, so did the astronauts of Apollo 17. We gotta go back there. You lose the key and we're in trouble. In fact, the Apollo 17 guys had a pretty good laugh trying to deploy the flag and were singing as they were setting out various experiments. Uh, I've never put a flag up in the moon before. What? Pull that in. <laughs> all we could, all we could do. Hey. <laughs> I was strolling on the moon one day in, in a merry, merry, merry month of month December. Now, May. May. High five to you if you knew all of this. Until literally a few days ago, I didn't, and sometimes thought to myself, damn, what a shame there is so little recorded from these incredible milestone events when humans walked on the moon. Well, wrong. There is more. It's more that I was an oblivious snob. A few days back, my friend Ryan sent me an email that read, Hey boy, I'm not sure if I told you about it before, but I met a guy at FITC back in 2019 who built this incredible website and eventually got a job with NASA because of it. And then there are a couple of links. In reality, there is a plethora of information recorded during the Apollo missions. They've been painstakingly put together by a team of volunteers and NASA employees, led by Ben Feist. In fact, uh, Ben recorded a really cool video outlining his journey in this project named Apollo in Real Time. I was actually surprised to learn from it that it was quite a big deal when it launched, being played during concerts and events. I, despite having done some research into space and the Apollo missions, have never heard of the project, nor can I find many videos delving deeper into it. What a shame, I thought. This site is such an invaluable and unexpectedly entertaining resource, and it certainly deserves to be discovered. Okay, here we go, apolloinrealtime.org. Very simple address. Let's have a look at it. So you can actually browse uh, three different missions. You can see the Apollo 11, Apollo 13, and Apollo 17. I'm gonna demonstrate to you just uh, one of these three missions to make it a little bit uh, more straightforward. But uh, obviously each one of them consists of just about the entirety of what was recorded during these missions. I think the whole idea of it being real time is that, well, you actually take, um, you know, the, the action takes place throughout the entirety of the missions. So the recorded footage is something like seven days long for each of these three missions, which actually ends up being quite a lot. So I'm not going to claim that I've watched all of it for all three of these missions, but I've browsed through uh, quite a lot of interesting parts of all three of these. So I encourage you to at the very least go and do the same and try it out. That being said, <clears throat> let's have a look at the Apollo 11. Right, so as we enter uh, one of these missions, we can either join in at T minus one minute, so we can see the launch of the Saturn rocket, 
or we can join now. So it's trying to synchronize whatever time you're in, in whatever time zone you're in right now, uh, to you know what time it would have been during the um, the mission itself. To be honest with you, it doesn't matter which one you join, you'll still be able to scroll around. Around it, uh, you also can see some uh, instructions and credits, and actually I recommend that you read through it. The interface of Apollo in real time is a little bit complicated, so it helps to get yourself familiarized with it a little bit. And also you can read a little bit more about the credits and about the story behind both the project itself as much as the missions uh, too. All right, so having read through those, or assuming that we have, let's go ahead and join in with T minus one. This is the interface of Apollo in real time website. Uh, don't worry about it, we'll go through all the sections and explain to you what actually is happening. It actually gets a little bit more intuitive the more you use it. And I think the way it is constructed allows you to access all of these various pieces of information that they have collected about uh, the missions, right? So uh, I think the way it's put together by, by the team of Apollo uh, in real time is absolutely incredible. And I'm completely blown away by the amount of effort this must have taken to you know, to complete and put it all together. We have the um, window in which we can see videos recorded during the missions. Note that not always there's going to, going to be a video. They only recorded segments of videos in various times. So when there is some video to be shown, it will be shown over here. Below it, we see a little control panel and we'll get back to it a little bit later. And a transcript of things that different people have said. So this obviously contains you know all of the communication that was going through you know in the different audio channels and you can actually click on the items from this transcript to be taken to you know the, the time when somebody said something right so if we for instance would like to hear let's say uh collins saying you sure sound clear down there bruce just click on that Right. So this is one of the easy ways you can actually navigate and get yourself to when a particular person said something. Apart from that, you can also go to Mission Milestones, which is similar to the transcript, but it's a list of things that have happened throughout the mission. And again, you are able to click on these to be able to transport yourself to various places in, uh, in the uh, mission itself along the timeline. And then lastly, there is the commentary section where you can actually read some interesting remarks that were left by various people on uh, these particular different uh, things that are happening uh, throughout the recordings, right? So these are just some extra additional information you can read apart from just the, the primary content that you'll be watching. So, having uh, seen that, we can also have a look at this segment over here. So, there is uh, quite a bit of information that can be found over here. Firstly, there are the photographs that have been taken in various uh, parts of, of the mission. And once again, you can scroll up and down through these and you can click on these to be able to be taken to when, probably more or less, these photographs would have been taken. Um, actually, speaking of this, we could probably mention that I don't know how precise the accuracy of these timings are. I would imagine that, you know, synchronizing the video with the audio is done very well. Uh, but whether these images have actually been taken at these moments, you know, down to a second precision is something I'm not entirely sure about. But nevertheless, it's, you know, entertaining to not only be able to be exposed to the written content in the videos, but also see at which points various photographs have been taken in those missions. I think it's super cool. So on top of that, you see a list of all of these different uh, mission control channels. <clears throat> so what you're reading here in the transcript and what you'll be hearing is this main audio recorded between, oh my goodness, I don't even know what it is, flight director or just flight and the, the capsule. But then on top of that, you can access 
a variety of different additional mission control channels where they speak about you know things that were specific to them so if you click at one of these channels one of these names you will be taken to the audio track recorded for that specific channel and this mission control audio will actually show you where uh, different channels have actually been used so if we click I don't know on uh, what is this uh, that's affirmative thank you yeah, so we get we get a bit of a recording coming from that time. Right. So then on top we've got this mysterious looking navigation uh, interface, and it takes a little bit of a while to get used to it. But in general, the idea behind it is that you can scroll through the entirety of the mission using this top panel. And then you can see that there is this little window that you're scrolling through. So this little window then becomes the entirety of the second interface, like this the second strip that now you'll be able to pass through with a little bit more accuracy. And once you do that, you can actually take that window and go to the bottom strip to get to the precise second where you want to be accessing things. So in general, the idea for using this interface and for interacting with the Apollo in real time is that you scroll around with this top strip, you find roughly where you want to be, then you go to the second strip, you kind of specify where you want to be a little bit more precisely, and then finally on the bottom strip, you can actually click on the place where you would like to be in a particular moment. Like I say, it's not super straightforward at the beginning, but it's very easy to get used to once you understand what it's about. Now, on top of this interface panel, we can also see a number of information, and these correspond to different things that we have seen already. So, for instance, the blue um, rectangles that you'll see on the bottom correspond to the videos that are being recorded. Secondly, you will find the uh, these orange markers, and they will mark uh, key mission milestones. So we've seen those mission milestones listed out over here next to the transcript. If we go into the uh, into the interface, into this uh, control timeline, then right here we'll be able to see a number of these mission milestones listed as well. Jesus, you see, like, <laughs> even, even talking about it gets a little bit tiring. There is a lot of things to this website and it's cool. It takes a while to get used to, but I think they did the best they could in combining the plethora of information that is out there to show you and tried their best in, in yeah, providing some way of understanding what you're actually browsing and accessing. So in either case, as you can see, there are these, these little elements over here. And I believe the green dots, uh, sorry, the green dashes correspond to the images being taken. So each time there is an image, you will be uh, seeing the timeline moving to a different one of these green dashes. So once again, we've got the video channel, we've got the transcript, mission milestones and commentary. And frankly, looking at these is what I do most of the time, because this is where most of the useful information is. We've got the photography and the variety of different mission control channels, if you want to listen to them, as well as the timeline interface that allows you to more precisely find a particular time spot in the mission. So how about we go ahead and do that and we try to see some of the interesting information that, uh, that they have provided in Apollo in real time. Let's see. Obviously, I'm going to go to the most interesting part for everyone, which is... Yeah, I just love to, you know, go into the mission milestones and just scroll down and, you know, go to all these various important events that have happened. Funny fact, did you know that he actually said one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind? And there is a whole lot of stories about it. And it's actually a pretty interesting story because uh, Neil himself didn't remember what he said, but he assumed he said for a man because then the meaning changes quite a lot when you say it was a small step for a man, a giant leap for mankind. Otherwise, people say, well, 
small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. It kind of means the same. So Neil was trying to defend what he actually tried to say there. And people don't research into it and realize that where Neil is from, people oftentimes eat away that little app before they try to say something. And it's quite probable that he did exactly the same thing over there. Anyway, little digression. Yeah, what else can you find? There's just so much, so much you can find around here. And, you know, honestly, I think the whole point of this video is to show you how we know these key moments, we know, you know, one st small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. And we know all of these, you know, key moments, big photos, but there's so much more, there's so much more, like the things that Collins were saying as he was kind of flying around the moon waiting for the boys. Um, you know, them having jokes around when they were kind of closing in together. Uh, the, you know, the, the conversation they had with the president after they have landed is actually pretty interesting. To, to listen to the entirety of the thing. It's super cool, so many cool things. It's seven days of recording. You can definitely find a ton of interesting stuff in there. And that's only Apollo 11. We haven't even looked at Apollo 13 and Apollo 17. And I promise to you, these are equally cool. All of them being, you know, seven days long or possibly even more. And you can follow how these We're astronauts now handled. We're now approaching the how these astronauts handled, uh, you know, their missions and, as you know, Apollo 13 going through some serious troubles. So, you know, what, what exactly happened there? Super interesting, right? Let's find the famous quote. And also, obviously, the Apollo 17. Well, obviously, interestingly enough, if I'm not mistaken, these were the last people to have visited the moon. So super valuable information and super enjoyable to see what kind of things they were doing there at the time. At least, uh, you know, at the time I'm recording this video, because, you know, who knows? There it is, Houston, there's Camelot. Wow. Wow. Target. I see it. We got them all. 42 degrees, 37 degrees, to 5,500. It's so funny, they sound so different to uh, Neil and Buzz. It's kind of nice to hear like how different people approach the same or similar problem. Oh, you said shut down, I shut down and we dropped, didn't we? Yes, sir. But we is here. Man, is we here. How's that look? That Pressure. looks good. Pressures look great. Thanks, dude, I'm just a little... Yeah, they're, they're quite fun to, to listen to. Uh, yeah, and then later, obviously, when they when they make it to the, to the surface itself, Don't move it till I see it. It's all over. Orange! Don't move it till I see it. I've stirred it up with my feet. Hey, it is! I can see it from here. It's orange. Wait a minute, let me put my visor up. It's still orange. Sure it is. Yeah, we can also see the lunar ascent. Ignition. Right that way, Houston. That's your good. Excellent. So, obviously, there is a ton to be seen in these videos, in these recordings, in the transcripts, in the photographs. I would never cover all of them in one video. All I'm trying to do is to encourage you to go and check it out for yourself. It honestly is mind-blowing that this website isn't more well-known, uh, because it provides so much context, so much info interesting information, and it's kind of a shame that all we know are those few little quotes and few photos when there is so much, and some of these photos are beautiful, beautiful in original high quality. Um, I totally enjoy spending time just listening to what these guys had to say and just kind of imagine, you know, what it, what it would feel like if I were up there myself. Uh, you know, even if I was there in a the control room, what would that feel? You know, listening to the, to the boys, uh, you know, talking to each other, either from the moon surface or landing or in the orbital uh, command, um, you know, making it back to the Earth. Um, it, it kind of gets funny and philosophical in many places. And I think that's one thing that I didn't realize before that, well, th these were just three lads locked up in a booth for a week and they had to cope with it somehow. And they were, yeah, cracking up jokes and they were, you know, listening to music and eating food and listening to the news from the earth and all these different things that, you know, you wouldn't have thought so because all you know about is, you know, the landing and the one small step for a man, which nonetheless are impressive and totally worth, you know, knowing about. But um, I found it super cool to have access to all of that extra information. And I find it super entertaining. So all I can do now is to say, Go ahead and definitely check out Apollo in real time. Enjoy it. <laughs>